Hey, what's up, warriors? And wake up, wake up, wake up. This is your wake up call to something that you guys may have heard of before or maybe not have heard of. But I want to introduce a couple of my friends here that I've got that we're going to be talking about some pretty eye opening. Um, I mean, it opened up my eyes so much that I have bruises. That's actually not true. My eyes were woke up a long time ago to uh, the deceit in this industry. Um, we're talking about the beauty care industry, the cosmetic industry today. Um, I actually had a surgery last week, so um, I'm actually trying out some eyeshadow underneath the eyes. Just kidding. It's actually part of the process of recovery. So if you guys have never heard of who I am before, maybe you found me on Instagram or maybe on YouTube or maybe on Facebook or my um, VIP newsletter on DianeKaser.com. I am the founder of DianeKaser.com and I'm the creator of Chi Hormone Warrior Transformation Program, which stands for Cleanse Your Body, Heal Your Hormones, and Ignite Your Life. And the first step to cleansing and the first step to really the, the path of self-love is to ask the question of how am I being unloving to myself? How am I not treating myself well? And what can I do to get rid of that in my life so that I can show my body and my temple and my skin the most loving uh, manners as, as, as I possible. And one, one way that we do this on a regular basis is with cosmetics and skincare. So, so many of us are asking the question of, how do I look younger? How do I feel younger? How um, can I feel more energized? And the answer is not in just a random supplement or a random procedure. It's in asking the question, what am I doing on a regular basis that is draining me, that is depleting my hormones, that is causing skin cancer or disease or dysfunction or depletion or skin issues and sex issues and, and all of the things it's all rooted in one thing and that is toxicity. So we women, we do this thing one, we all do this in common. We put stuff on our face, we are hoping to look better, we're covering some stuff up. And ideally today we're gonna talk about how to, I wouldn't even say the word cover up because it means that you're hiding from something, but how to have a more energized, youthful, uh, glowing appearance without um, robbing your health at the same same time. In fact, loving on your skin. So today we're going to talk about something very specific. And I wanted to introduce my two friends who are currently on either side of me when we're recording this. And there's a bunch of people below us. Um, so this might come back. This might be released later on on my radio show. But for now, we're doing a Zoom, a live Zoom call. So I've got Dia over here and I've got Melissa. So ladies, introduce yourself real quick. Dia, who are you? What's your about, girl? Hi, um, my name is Dia Draper. Um, and I am about radical self-care and loving ourselves and really understanding ourselves and others to make our make our best lives and one of the ways i do that is through um my work that also with melissa and diane on um, beauty counter and making sure that what goes on our bodies is as um, safe and healthy and good for us as what goes in our bodies awesome and i am melissa bachnight out of colorado and it's snowing today, that's why I'm in a sweater and Dia's in a tank top in California. Um, I am about really empowering women and particularly in this area of beauty counter. Um, my, my day job is helping people improve their health and then beauty counter is a huge passion project of mine in educating women and men on the importance of what we put on our body. So I'm really excited to dive into our topic tonight and give you some tools on what you can do about it to stay safer. Awesome. Awesome. So ladies, today we're going to talk about cosmetics. Um, we have different things we're going to focus on every month. And this is our very first call. So as we have more momentum, as you guys are sharing this, and as you guys are learning about this stuff that will blow your mind, hopefully you're sharing this and you're inviting friends and sisters. Um, we are going to talk today about also the income potential to share this kind of information because we understand that people are motivated by not only just um, helping others, but also like, how can I turn this into um, a support financial in stream, income stream for me too? So I wanted to show you guys first quickly what I have, I'm trying to prevent you guys from, which is this lovely BPA bag full of, which stands for BPA is um, plastic. <laughs> it's very toxic to our body to um, touch it. It's also very toxic to have on our skin and is also contained in many of these lipsticks that are in here as well as lead. So um, I'm not going to hear to, I'm not going to talk crap about every line that's out there because getting into a comparison game can get very lengthy, but you guys just need to know that there are most of the companies that are out there have extremely high levels of a very toxic heavy metal that is called lead. 
in them. And so I have about three of these bags worth probably over $5,000 of just pure toxins that I'm trashing. So what we're, we're hoping to do today is help you guys be on the other side of that and not have to waste literally, literally a lot of money on getting your skin wasted with a bunch of chemicals and, and then also um, prevent you from having the downstream effects of that. So lead is what we're gonna focus on today. So the average female applies this two to 14 times throughout her day. And I'm gonna cite a, a couple statistics here, is that first of all, the FDA does not look into all of this in, ter in terms of protecting us when it comes to um, in the politics and uh, European lines, European um, uh, governing agencies uh, are looking deeper into protection than America, which is one of the worst. So the findings of lead is that they found lead lipstick um, it used to be considered an urban legend up until about 2007, 10 years ago, when the campaign for safe cosmetics released the report, a poison kiss, like you're poisoning people with that kiss. So we want to prevent that uh, from your kids and your loved ones and ultimately yourself. Um, but what they did is they did, an independent, they did an independent laboratory test that looked at 33 different popular brands of lipstick for lead content. And what they found is that 61% of lipsticks contained lead with range levels ranging up to 0.65 parts per million. Well, I mean, like, what does that number even mean? What it means is that this is how much it, exposure to lead is safe, this much. So what we're trying to do is reduce your exposure. And I'm gonna show you guys when Melissa's talking a little bit more about what lead, um, what lead actually, the history of lead and why they've removed it. So when I get to that segue, I'll show you guys an actual lab test that I did years ago when I was using those toxic things. So. The, the side effects of lead are huge. And the, the studies that have been done is that there is no safe level of lead anywhere. Um, the side effects of large levels of long-term exposure of lead is abdominal pain, adrenal insufficiency, aggression, allergies, anemia, anorexia, anxiety, arthritis, arterial sclerosis, ADD, autism, back pain, behavioral disorders, blindness, cancer, cardiovascular disease, cataracts, cartilage destruction, concentration loss, disrupts neurotransmitters, which is your brain, dyslexia, emotional instability, epilepsy, fatigue, hallucination, hallucinations, headaches, do I need to keep going? So there's about 80 more of these. And so I'll spare you guys all the details and I'll put all the information later on when this is um, a blog. But I want you guys to know first and foremost that lead in no levels is safe for us yet. It is in most every single lipstick today except for the ones that are being conscious about it. So Melissa, can you tell us a little bit about lead and the history of lead? Yeah, I'm just gonna do a very brief overview of that. But you know, one of the things that's really interesting is that um, we were just chatting about this before we jumped on the call that you know, you're, you're not allowed to have lead in house paint. So I don't know if anyone out there has bought a house, but you have to sign a, a lead disclosure, which I feel like should come with every lipstick um, container that you buy as well. But so um, the United States banned it from paint in 1978, and it's also not allowed in gasoline. So that's really amazing that we're protected from those two uh, major things that we're exposed to. However, um, the one thing that we're actually putting in our mouths and essentially eating, um, the FDA doesn't really regulate what levels are acceptable. So it's up to companies, so all companies, and we'll talk today more specifically about Beauty Counter to set our own limits. Absolutely, and here's, um, here's what mine look like. So you can see here's my hair tissue mineral analysis. That PB right there, that stands for lead. No level is safe, and look at mine. <laughs> Look at mine, off the chart. I still to this day have never seen somebody's lead that high. Um, so it could be something that was passed on from your mom, your grandma, and it takes four to five generations. That would be your great or great, great grandma if she handed down some lead just like I, I showed you and I was unknowingly got pregnant and dumped that into my baby. It would take four more generations beyond that to have no lead in any, any of your reports. Lead is very invasive, it is not safe. So Dia, do you have any clue as to why lead is even in lipsticks? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's not gonna be listed on any ingredient label, right? Like they aren't being like, well, in order to make like a really great lipstick, we're gonna add lead. Um, but it is a part of the manufacturing processing that comes in as a contaminant. 
Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's a piece that most companies just don't even want to look at is what else is getting into our products beyond just what we're intending to get into our products. So it's sort of similar to like sodium lauryl, lauryl sulfate releasing 1,4-dioxane in the, in the production process. You know, lead is creeping in through these manufacturing processes. And so having companies that are aware of that, willing to watch out for it, avoid it, and test for it is critical. Absolutely. That's why, you know, I was, I was talking to one of my nurse clients earlier is that, hey, is this line safe? What about this line? What about this line? And EWG is an extensive resource where you guys can do a bunch of homework and you can take all of your products and all of your bags and go on there and like do a bunch of research and find out what the rating and the score is of your personal care products, your cosmetic products. If it's anything higher than a three, because anything higher than a three is starting to get into more dangerous territory, I would say, what are you doing with that company? Um, you want to avoid these allergies and a lot of the nightmare of the long-term exposure and the consequences of this, including for your teenagers and your little beautiful children that you know use a lot of these as, as stocking stuffers. So if we're giving them to kids at a young age and not prioritizing the importance of understanding what's even in this stuff, then it's a lot of work down the road to peel it all back because people are like, oh my God, it's so much work to replace all this stuff. So in the interim of having to dismantle all of that, we can start them early. And lead is one of the bigger ones. And that's why we're starting this series with lead. So Melissa, why don't we talk about um, some of the alternatives instead of the stuff that they are purchasing at, at like a beauty store, like the L'Oreal's, the Max, the Cover Girls, those are all the places that you're likely to find these, these toxins. And they're not like Dia said, they're not gonna be, hey, this is all the junk we've got in our products, buy us. No, they're gonna put like, you know, a supermodel in front of the ad and say, hey, look, so-and-so wears it. It's like, do they? <laughs> so what can we do instead, Melissa? What are, what are the options that we have? So one of the things you mentioned was, you know, looking at the environmental working group. So that's a great resource to see what ingredients are in your products. Now, so just to kind of revisit it, that this is not something that is required to be disclosed by any company, nor are there limits set by the FDA. And so, um, you know, we represent Beauty Counter, which is a brand that holds these, holds our transparency and safety standards to the highest level. And so it's important to align yourself with a brand like that, you know, and, and I can speak very, um, very deeply about what we do at Beauty Counter. So, um, you know, if you want to align with us, we've got options to become a customer and get involved with it. But one of the things that we did as a, as a company, which I found was incredibly uh, spoke incredibly highly of our integrity is that before we launched our color cosmetics, we actually, I'm just going to refer to my notes of, of how we went about this, but before we even sent it to market, so I'm going to use the term heavy metals, which lead is a part of that. We sent our products out to, um, to a bunch of independent agencies to test for 12 different heavy metals. And when it came back, we were shocked because we even had higher levels of heavy metals than we expected and that we intended. And we believe that we had the strictest safety standards. So this is before we launched anything. So we scrapped the entire line and they were like, okay, this is completely unacceptable. Wow. And so rather than coming to market and, you know, I don't know how many, how much money was lost in that process, but you know, our integrity was more important than just launching a product line. So they went back to the drawing board and recommitted to having lower levels. So we act as a company commit to um, having lower levels than the strictest international standards. Um, and we aim for non-detectable for our, our heavy metals. And it's very hard to, to get absolutely zero, but non-detectable is the best that, that we can do for our heavy metal levels. Wow. And you guys, if, if you were to ask me what one thing is the most toxic ingredient that is draining the most of us and causing neurological issues, exhaustion, um, and feeling like you're just not yourself and you can't think clearly and your bowels are slug sluggish and you, you go to the gym or you try to work out and you get 10 minutes in, you're exhausted. It's heavy metals and they're everywhere at this point. And, and just like Melissa was talking about, the regulation on it is so, is so loose that Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to come in and tighten the reins and say, enough is enough. And so Beauty Counter was, what Melissa, was, is Beauty Counter like the, the company that is doing the most amount of advocacy or DM, yeah, maybe you can answer this too, um, going to the White House and really asking and demanding for change? Absolutely. Um, so 
you know, it's funny. So some of these companies, you know, it's like win a car. And for us, it's like win a trip to DC to advocate and talk to your representatives. <laughs> um, <laughs> that deeply ingrained in, in the culture of Beauty Counter. And, you know, as, as consultants, like this is what we love doing. We love educating and making sure that everyone understands what is in their product so that they can make more informed choices. So it's advocacy at both levels. You know, the company itself, Greg Renfrew, who's the CEO, who's a fascinating person to check out on YouTube. Um, you know, she is committed to getting safer products into the hands of everyone. And she knows that's not entirely through Beauty Counter. It can't be. Right. Uh, and so the, the solution is to get regulations. We've been working to, you know, get new regulations passed, um, constantly advocating for change, but then not leaving it just to you know, the politicians to make that change. We're also working at the ground level and the grassroots level to educate individual people. That's why this is through you know, our networks, because I can say to my friend, hey, did you know this? Hey, look at this. And that is also a place that it changes. You've seen now Target, um, CVS, some other companies committing to having fewer, you know, bad ingredients and in products that they're selling. And that is because of consumer demand, because consumers actually can impact the market. And so we're really coming at it from both angles. Like, let's, let's work to get the regulations in place, but let's also empower individuals to make smarter choices for themselves and their families. Yeah. And it's, it's addicting, right? Like, this is where OCD becomes like actually favorable to your health because if you have obsessive compulsive disorder at trying to keep your family safe, you start learning this stuff and you go, oh God, I got to learn more. And lead is in many, many places. It's not just, you know, in, or now it's no longer in as exhaust as much or who knows, you know, at this point, like they're so loose with things, but it's also, you know, it's in our toothpaste. It, it, it's in other cosmetics like your mascara. It, it's in building materials. It's in medications, it's in rainwater, which we breathe this stuff in, it's in pesticides. It's very invasive. So when you start learning about one thing like lead, you start wondering where else is this stuff lurking? And then your life becomes a detoxed lifestyle. You start to wonder where else am I exposed to this? And so one step at a time, you start to reduce your exposure to one thing and the next thing. And just like Dia said, it's about education, not just with like change your lipstick, but ask the right questions of where else am I exposed to this and cleanse this crap from your body. And the best cleanse is to stop putting this stuff on your body that requires you to cleanse to begin with. So um, let's talk next, unless you guys have something else to say about the solution. Um, did you guys want to segue into that or was there anything else that you wanted to comment on before we did that? Well, one thing I do want to add is just sort of the buyer beware as we're giving your solutions is the term natural. It's not a regulated term. And so often, and I, and I was, I was this person too. Um, and when you know better, you do better, but you look and you, you read labels, right. And you think, okay, it says natural, it says safe, it says green and whatever, whatever words that we're looking for that we think, okay, I'm doing, I'm really making a safe choice. And these terms are not regulated specifically in this space. And so one of the, you know, you, you cited a study earlier, Diane, and, and one study that, um, we looked at, we looked at six brands and 12 different products that were all labeled natural. And um, the, the lead ranges went from non-detectable to 240 parts per million, which is incredibly high. And so this is, again, why you need to, you know, use your resources and go with brands that you trust or, you know, use the environmental working group to be able to dig a little bit deeper than just reading the label. Yeah, and yeah, and the thing that for me, who who has abundance of time? Yay. <laughs> I love environmental working group, but what I don't love doing is all of the research to figure out what about this line? What about this product? And you could like fall in love with, I was just talking about someone with Burt's Bees earlier. And they're like, what about Burt's Bees? And I'm like, well, you know, they used to be a pretty good line and then they got bought out and then they started changing their formulas because they got bought out by a big company. So these things are happening left and right. And who has time to keep up with that stuff? You know, it's much easier, or I should ask you the question, would you rather do all the work yourself and, and do all the research and see um, what the, the, the scores are? And if it's not high, go somewhere else. Would you rather do all that research and 
find 10 different lines that has maybe a good lipstick and a good mascara and a good blush and like do all that homework? Or would you rather have extra time with your family and your life uh, to do things that you want to do, even if it's checking things off your to-do list <laughs> um, and just you know, saving yourself the time by being with one company that takes care of all of the work for you. So you'll never have to worry about having any other toxins in there because we have something called the never list. And it's a long list of things that we promise never to put in your skincare um, with the company, you know, your shampoo, your conditioner, your cosmetics, you will never put these things in and um, the products, which would mean that you're never going to be exposed to them and put them, put yourself in harm's way. It's a pretty high promise. So um, about that, about the never list, this lipstick is something that I believe all three of us are wearing. Is that right? <laughs> so we've got, we promised you guys about 20 minutes and then we're going to move in and start moving into questions. Um, we're going to, before we get into questions, if you guys want to ask questions, please do so in the chat box. And if you're watching this later on, you could always email questions and I will share with you guys either in an email or a post below this on how to reach out to us with um, questions that you have so we can answer them and empower you guys with what color do I get? Or like, what kit should I get? Or what's the best way of purchasing these things, which is what we're going to talk about next. So this particular line is when we just launched and it's called the color intense lipstick. I have them in two colors myself and it was very simple to purchase. I actually texted a DM like, Hey, do you know what color should, do you think I should get? And she gave me a couple recommendations and it was like, Oh, too late. I already got this one and this one. And I love both of them. So this one is actually called little black dress, although I'm wearing a pink shirt right now. So it'll look good anywhere. Um, I love this color pink and I'm not wearing any lip liner or anything. I just straight up went like this. I love the smell of it. It smells like peppermint. Is it supposed to smell like peppermint, you guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, it smells so good. It smells like I'm rubbing essential oils on my lips. So you can see the color of it here. You can see the texture and you can see my lips. See this color here. Um, it lasts a long time. I'm not sure exactly what Beauty Counter says on how long that is. Ladies, you guys know the answer to that? The estimated duration of time? I can't actually see them doing that. It's like saying, you know, because it depends on what you're doing with your day. So I don't know. We can follow up with that if there is a claim, but to my knowledge. Yeah. I will say that um, I've had this on. I've been drinking my little like kombucha. Um, it does last a good amount of time, but like if you're making out, I don't think I don't know that it's gonna like stick around for that long. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say too. Like, how yeah. long? How heavy of a makeout session are you in? Right. <laughs> so like, if if you're going hot and heavy, like you might need to reapply. You know, but yeah. I find it lasts you know, <laughs> last pretty well through the day. Like all. Um, even after lunch, I'll be like, oh, I still have, you know, it's not as strong, but I'll still have some on. I noticed the same thing. I, I noticed myself, um, it had lasted maybe like five hours of like residual. So there are other lines out there that will last you like a long time throughout the day and you wake up the next morning, it's still on you, but you can almost guarantee that there's tons of toxins in that formula to help you last that long. So the longer the makeup lasts, the longer the claim, it's typical that there's just, you know, more chemicals in it. So well, I love that you and said- And more that. drying, and more yeah. drying. Like I don't find this to be drying at all. And that's what those other ones typically, when it was like long lasting color, it would just like pull all the moisture out too. And I don't find that with this. Yeah, yeah, and then you find yourself like drinking more, more water, trying to hydrate, which doesn't do anything for your lips. So. Um, this allows your lips to breathe, which is really important for all of your skin is that you are, are able to breathe <laughs> because when we're putting on, you know, anything that clogs your pores, you're also asking, um, your inside skin, like your digestive tract to become more congested as well and more toxic, which will then end up on your skin anyway. So the path to really truly anti-aging, or I should say my favorite thing to say instead of that is more of a youthful appearance, um, a, a better glow because you're actually feeding your skin healthy things instead of feeding your skin toxic things um, is leads to a longer life of looking more youthful. So let's talk about opportunities here. If you could, Melissa, um, this, as far as like, Hey, so I want to buy this lipstick. Now what, um, what are my options here? So our founder, which Dia referenced earlier, Greg Renfrew was very intentional about the design of our company and making it as easy as possible for everyone to have access to our products. So I think we're at a very fair price point. Everything is relative, but um, I think we have a great price point for, as for how high performing our products are. So if you want to just buy 
one of the color intense lip shears, you can go to Diane's website, buy a lip, buy a lip um, intense lipstick, and that's all you have to do. You don't have to give any of your additional information. It just ships right to you. We have membership rewards, re ugh, rewards program. So I think of it like a Nordstrom reward. So there it's $29. Um, anybody that, that shops with me is a, a member that is a regular customer because you get 15% product credit back on everything that you buy, which is awesome. And there's always a gift for signing up. So right now they're giving away a free charcoal mask, which is worth $49. So you get free shipping over a hundred dollars. You get a free charcoal mask. You get 15% product credit back and it only costs you $29 for the whole year. It's awesome. And then beyond that, um, if you want to be a, a warrior like us on the ground and sharing this education, if this is something that you feel really passionate about, you can join as a consultant. It's $98 for the year. And um, Diane can help you through that or one of us uh, helping her out. Um, and that you get a starter kit with that. And it's an unbelievable experience to get to share this education with people and really make a difference in their lives. So we would love to have you as part of our team. Um, and you get to make some really amazing new friends that share the similar passions as you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dia, what were you going to say? I just said, and money, you know, like there's, there's yeah. the community aspect is huge. And it's so nice to be with like minded people that, you know, I can reach out to anyone and be like, like, ah, like I, you know, I, I need a dry shampoo. What should I use? You know, it's a, it's a great resource that way, but it's also, it's made such a huge difference in my life in terms of additional income. So uh, yeah. if you're wanting, you know, if you just want to use the products, that's awesome. And that makes a difference and you're voting with your dollars, which we really, you know, truly appreciate and matters. But if you want to build a business and also, you know, get that extra income to support the things that you want to do, whatever that is, um, it, it's a fantastic opportunity to do that and do um, something really good and make a strong social impact at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's um, that link that I just shared in the chat box and that I'll share with you guys later on. Um, is a link and it was a video that Melissa and myself reported sometime last year. And um, it's really hits home as to the, the political nonsense that has gone down in this industry and how no one's really spoke up until you know, this company and Greg and um, now all of us. So if you find yourself saying, what is it I want to do in my life? I want to make a difference. You know, every woman that I ask, I say, what do you want to do with your life? You know, wh what are you here for? And they say, I want to make a difference. I want to help people. And I ask, how do you want to do that? And they say, well, I want to, you know, volunteer my time. Well, here's a great way to do it. You can volunteer your time by sharing this with people by saying, hey, you might not know this because so many women don't know this stuff. They just don't. I didn't know this stuff before I started researching it a couple of years ago. And when I dug it up, I went, this is a train wreck. It's not just lead. And we're going to talk more about that in future webinars. Today, we're just focusing on about lead because if we talked to you guys about every one of these things, you would be so blown out of the water that you might stop listening because it gets really discouraging. So I want to help people is what we women are rooted in. So how can you help people? Cool. You could also make some money at the same time. This is social awareness. And this is also a, an attempt to, if you are looking to build some sort of a net worth, if you're looking to work from home on the side, if you're a mom that is like, you know what, I really want to help people, but I got a little baby at home. This is a great way to do that. So if you thought about that, you know, one thing you could do is you could first try a couple of these and buy a couple of these lipsticks, see how you see how you like them. And then you could become a consultant and really start, you know, doing this. And if someone's like, Hey, what makeup do you use? You just send them literally a link and say, this is all the stuff that I use. It'll blow your mind. And you can share with people just by sharing that one link. And I haven't done much except for this video with Melissa. And now these videos to really spread awareness because when I start, when I suffered cystic acne when I was younger and a lot of it, I, I know how to do with what I was putting on my skin. And I tried all the stuff to put on my skin to make it better. Um, I was using toxic products and congesting my pores. So your skin wants to breathe. It's already hard enough for us to take a deep breath throughout the day. Your skin's feeling the same. So if you are somebody who really likes a good deal, you can try the rewards at 15% off like Melissa talked about. 
Um, now it's just, it's a personal preference. So if anybody has questions in the chat box, you guys can ask us, but I want to start closing up in, in honor of the 40 minutes that we promised you guys today. So Melissa or Dia, what other things did we have on the list for the agenda that we haven't covered yet? Do you do want to just mention the other two types of lip products? Oh yeah. So in addition to the color intense, um, which is new for us, we also have, um, and they come in a gold tube. We have um, lip shears, which are like, I just describe them as like buttery goodness. There's definitely like a hue of the color and it sort of, it kind of brings color out in your lips, but it's not a pop. Um, and so I love using those during the day. They feel like, you know, chapstick, they're highly moisturizing, they feel fantastic and they look great. Um, but they're not that color pop. So if you're not a pop person, you know, I think Diane like loves the like color intense and it looks fantastic on her. And, you know, it's a stretch for me. I look a little, so I tend to go with the shears because I like a little bit more of a natural look. Um, so we have that. And then we also have, I'll just show one of them. We also have our glosses that I don't know how they got the like perfect blend of like not too sticky, but like not nothing. Um, like it's really just, it feels nice. It's easy. It looks, um, it looks like just the right sort of sheen and shimmer to me. Um, they don't all have shimmer. I don't mean like glitter, but um, right. it's right. kind of the, the, you make the glitter with your genetics through your lips. <laughs> <laughs> I just breathe glitter. <laughs> uh, but, BYOG. <laughs> They're great products. And then again, also, um, we also have lip conditioners that are really nice um, to use too. Yeah. And they come in like multiple different colors as well. So you guys can play with them. Um, if you guys had, because we get this question a lot. So if somebody, Melissa, let's say somebody purchased um, a couple of colors, which mine are both sitting right here. The other one that I have is called Garden Party. Mm. So I got. That's what I'm wearing. Oh, it is really? Mm -hmm. Mine looks a little bit more pink. Maybe. Maybe it's oh, because, I'm, because, because I put on like half, like a quarter of the amount. Oh, I like to go real hard in the paint, pun intended. <laughs> 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 but here's mine. You can see them right here, the colors. Uh, so let's say, Melissa, I didn't like this color. What do I do? do I, can I send it back? How does that work? So we actually put in a new return policy as of this February, which I am so grateful for as is everybody else but it's free returns and we you have 60 days actually so each package comes with a return label and in my experience you know our return rate is actually very low i don't know it used to be under two percent i don't know the current statistics so um not most people aren't sending their stuff back but if you don't love it it's not a great fit for you there it's generally no questions asked and they accept your product back and and you you do like i said you have 60 days to try it yeah 60 days. I guess at that point, you probably wear the whole thing out. <laughs> I use this whole tube. I need a new one. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and I mean, hopefully you have some integrity if you liked it, but like if it's, exactly if you notice that there's something going on after a while and you've been, and it's almost gone, like they don't ask about that either. So. Yeah. And you know, the people who um, watch my stuff and who follow me are some of my clients who are chemically sensitive. And so um, one of the things I really enjoy about Beauty Counter is that when I was using some of my former toxic stuff, and I had a, a long stint last year where I was just, my skin was reacting to a lot of things. And, and that, that definition is just really when your cells and your body is so toxic um, that your skin is reacting and going, nope, don't touch me, don't touch me, get off me. And I had a lot of reactions going off my skin. So I had to be very conscious about the types of things I put on my skin. And what I have experienced so far with Beauty Counter is that I've had no issues with any of the products. I had a little bit of an issue with one of them just because there was a little bit of titanium dioxide, which is common in like eyeshadows for shimmer and stuff. And that's like probably the only thing that I've seen in Beauty Counter's line that, that adds any kind of an allergenic response to anything. So if you're wondering like, what if I have a reaction? The likelihood is low. I mean, ladies, have you guys heard of anybody that's had like a significant reaction for any of your customers or, or um, wholesale members? Um, I don't hear about it a lot, but I will say like some people have an allergy to like coconut oil, right? And that's in, in some of our products, right? So there's sometimes with sensitive skin, it's not always the obvious choices. If you have chemical sensitivity, we're going to, for the most part, I haven't heard much of an issue, but there are some people that just have 
allergic reactions to certain things or vitamin C oil is a lot for them if, if they go into the sun or, you know, there's, um, there's some things, but for the most part, I have had the opposite experience where clients who have sensitive skin can never find something that works, um, have been like, oh my God, like, where has this been? Um, because I think it's provided some solutions that they've been looking for for a long time. Right. And the one thing I'll add to that is that, you know, if you know you have a sensitivity to something, one other thing that's great about our company is that we disclose every single ingredient. And so there's different ways to look that up. So if you're looking at a face wash and you want to see what's in it, you can look it up that way. Or if you want to look up an ingredient and see every product that it's in, you can also do it that way. So if you're fortunate enough to know the source of your sensitivities, then you can can prevent it ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. If you've done their homework of all of the hundreds of thousands of chemicals that are out there, you know exactly ones that you're reactive to. They're probably, first of all, not even going to be in these products. But second of all, um, if there are some that's just a, a byproduct of, of making makeup, the, the safer ones even, some people still have a reaction to spinach. And you know, it's a healthy food, but it's just our body doesn't like it for whatever reason, or we don't have uh, the ability to, di to digest it. And it's that same thing applies to the skin. So um, we are going to close it up right now, you guys. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm going to put a few links below and email addresses below. Um, at the time I'm filming this, I am actually going to be stepping away and heading into the jungle in Peru. So I'm not even going to have any access to computer or phone. And I'm partly freaked out about that, but like most of the 99% of me is not. <laughs> so uh, if you guys have any questions or about um, wanting to order some things or try some things out, I will have uh, a backup while I'm away. And then when I get back, I can address any other questions that maybe you guys had for me specifically beyond like cosmetics. But for the most part, what I found is when I start sharing this stuff and sharing the links and people um, have access to the, the dianecasia.com forward slash safer skincare, then there is plenty of information there, enough to get started. There's a few of my favorite products. He, these are a few of my favorite things. So <laughs> I have a few of my favorite things on that page that you guys can peruse around. You can see the specials that we have. You can also see what's new on the website that you can click on from there. And for the most part, most people have just done their own shopping and bought stuff and I haven't seen any returns yet. So um, if you have any questions about colors or the opportunity, the business opportunity, or you want to add this to your practice or, or just add this to one of the favorite things that you want to share with your people and, and do good in the world and um, help others, empowering and educa educating and inspiring, there's a lot of people who are looking for this information and who will really, really appreciate it when you've shared it. So um, yeah, thank you guys for your time today. Dia, Melissa, any closing thoughts? No, just um, now that you know better, um, it's a great time to look at some products and see what other choices you might want to make and feel free to share with friends too. You know, this information is, I think, pretty vital. And so um, it's a kind deed to share it around. For sure. Yeah. All right, you guys, we will be doing this once a month. So um, come back next month. We're going to have a different topic for you and it's going to get realer and realer and realer. And you bet that you know that if this is happening in the beauty industry, it's happening everywhere else. So little by little, we're working to protect you and your family and your skin and your ovaries and your thyroid and everything. Your dog, I'm serious because your dog licks your face too. I mean, they really shouldn't because that could be like not good for parasites and stuff. But hey, this stuff becomes a part of everything in our life. So let's reduce your toxic load. Let's show your body that you love it through the things that you put in your skin. And let's spread the word to the world because that's what this entire company and what we, my friends here, Melissa and Dia, are all about. So thank you guys for joining us today and let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you guys for, um, this is going to be the second Tuesday of um, every month that we're going to be tuning in and I'll be sharing this on my newsletter as well as all of my social media channels and uh, you guys can watch it later or listen to this later. And if you have any questions for future uh, webinars that you'd like us to cover, just let us know ahead of time by emailing me, Diane at dianecasia.com and we will do our best to cover them. So for now, um, take care and if you have any questions too, you could also ask them on the next webinar on the chat, of course. So thanks a lot, ladies. I will see you all next time. Thank you for being here with us, Melissa and Dia. Bye. Thanks. Bye.